Saskatchewan and Manitoba are tied 7-7 in this final end. A win by Bob Pickering of Saskatchewan will force a playoff between Don Duguid's Manitoba rink and Heck Gervais' foursome from Alberta. Third, Rod Hunter holds the broom for Duguid. If Duguid can get the Saskatchewan shot rock out of there, even if he rolls out himself, he will have the Canadian Curling Championship won on the 12th foot. This is the most important shot in his 25 years of curling. Jim Pettifee's falls, but Don Duguid's last rock is dead on the target. A fine shot under tremendous pressure. That sure brings back some exciting memories. Hi, I'm Don Duguid. You know, there are some people who think curling is an easy game. Well, I'm of the opinion that curling is a very difficult game. To become a more consistent curler, you must be prepared to practice diligently and above all, practice the proper fundamentals. We are not going to make Briar champions out of you in the next 15 minutes, but we are going to show you the proper way to throw the curling rock with much more consistency and accuracy. One of the finest examples of a classic delivery is that of Rod Hunter. He exemplifies perfect timing, balance, motion, and concentration. You know, a good curling delivery is like a great golf swing or a great tennis serve. It's a consistent groove that the competitor works towards that's the real backbone of his game. One of the important features is being comfortable in the hack when you're delivering a curling stone. The way you achieve this is by having the ball of the foot against the back of the hack. Not the instep or the toe, but the ball of the foot. Now this is especially important when you're playing takeouts and you need a little extra drive or push out of the hack. The prime function when sitting in the hack is to concentrate on the shot you are about to play. The way you achieve this is have the sliding foot parallel with the toe of the hack foot, hand on top of the broom with the elbow slightly bent and the broom running to the center of the back. When you're in this position, you should be able to drop down into the perfect squat position in the delivery. Shoulder square, knee square to the broom at the other end, arm extended with the rock in front of you. Now when you're Beginning your backward motion, it is a small sidestep motion you must create. Now this is especially important when you try to get your foot in behind the rock. The further you take it out, the more problems you're going to have. At the beginning of the delivery, the skip must decide which turn his player is going to throw. Now in the out turn grip, the handle must be held at a 10 to 15 degree angle with the V of this hand running to the left shoulder. When he throws it properly in this manner, the out turn will rotate counterclockwise. Now, with the intern grip, the handle must be held straight with that same V running to the left shoulder, and when it's thrown properly, the rock will turn clockwise down the ice. Now, whether you're throwing the intern or the out turn, you must at all times grip the rock firmly. On the intern grip, there should be a V formed by your hand running to the left shoulder. The same thing applies in the out turn. That same V will run to that left shoulder if you are a right-handed curler. Now, the way you hold the rock in the hack is exactly the way you must take it back. For the intern, the handle must be held straight down the center line. You must take that rock exactly the same way back, forward, and just open the hand, and the rock will turn. The same thing applies to the out turn. Thumb at the side of the handle, grip it firmly. The way you address it is the way you take it back. You cannot turn it in the backswing. Come forward with it and just open your hand, and it'll turn. Now, a properly thrown rock or released rock should turn one and a half to two and a half times down the ice. At no time should the turn be forced on the curling rock. It's just a matter of opening the hand and letting it go. Now, the broom, when you're in the squat position, should rest lightly on the ice. Knees and shoulders square facing at the skip's broom. Now, the big feature here is when you take the rock back, that sidestep motion should be just small so you can get your foot right in behind the rock 
and get right down and concentrate on the shot that you are throwing. The wider the sidestep motion, the more problems with getting your foot directly behind the rock. You can see the foot right in behind the rock and he's using his broom for balance. Small sidestep motion, foot in behind the rock, broom down for balance, shoulder square, concentrating on the shot. Unfortunately, all rocks are not thrown down the center line. There are, of course, wide shots in curling. Now, when you're throwing the rock down the center line, the handle splits the center line with the shoulders and the knees square to the broom at the center. Now, for the widest possible outturn shot in curling, you must make that slight body adjustment, swing the rock at a different angle, still at the skip's broom, and the rock should just move slightly off that center line. The same thing applies with the intern. You make that small body adjustment, knees and shoulders, and you are now swinging the rock at a different angle. Now, of course, when you're throwing it down the center line, the sliding foot, the body, and the trailing foot is directly behind that rock and down the center line. Now, for the wide out turn, the foot, body, trailing leg is right behind that rock at all times. The same thing applies for the wide intern. You must at all times be directly behind the curling rock. Now in this illustration, the rock is being thrown down the center line and you can see the foot, body, trailing leg directly down the center line. Now for the wide out turn, you swing the rock at a different angle, your trajectory is different and you slide about 16 inches off that center line. At no time should you slide any wider than that. The same thing applies for the intern. You slide about 16 inches off that center line for the widest possible shot in curling. There are a lot of excellent lady curlers in the game today. One of them is Betty Hurd of Winnipeg. She has good balance, timing, and motion, and she gets directly in behind the rock. Betty's main problem here is that she pushes a little too hard and she has a tendency to drift, but she is directly in behind the rock. Size has no bearing on throwing the curling rock. This gentleman, while slightly overweight, has a tendency not to get his broom down for balance, and he uses his knee. Now, if he put his broom down, he wouldn't slide on his knee. Well, let's just recap some of the highlights of a good delivery. In this position, you must always be comfortable at the beginning of a delivery. Shoulder square, knee square, rock pointed right down the center. The broom resting slightly on the ice and not up in the air, as has been in the past, you must rest that broom slightly on the ice. Now, if he's beginning his forward motion, you should never take the rock out any further than this when you're beginning your motion backwards. There's the broom parallel with his sliding foot, and what swings the rock into position is both these feet, the hack foot and the sliding foot, push the body up, and this rises the body and helps you swing the rock into position. See it from the side here, the ball of the foot is still against the back of the hack, and he's starting his backward motion, and that's lifting his body. All the weight is on this hack leg. The sliding foot and the broom counteract the 42 pounds of curling rock that you are throwing, and he's swinging it into position. That's where all the weight is, and he's lifting his rock about knee height, and it shouldn't be lifted any further than that. Now you'll see that he's starting to come down into the sliding position. You can see the foot is going in behind the rock, the broom is almost touching the ice, and the rock is on the ice. You'll see how square he is to the broom, and he's still concentrating on the shot he's playing. This is most important. Now he's down, you can see that he's really got a lot of pressure on it because he's fighting his balance. His foot is in behind the rock and he must use this broom for balance. The sliding foot is slightly turned. This releases the knee and enables his body to come down low so he can get right in behind the rock. And here you see that he has his balance pretty well and the broom is just touching the ice. So he has perfect balance in this position and he's just about to let it go. Now there's a perfect release. It's just an opening of the hand. You should never force a turn on the rock. He's just opening his hand his broom is in the air because he's absolutely got perfect balance, and there's his knee at the side. Now that's it. If you can master that delivery, you'll make 95% of your curling shots. To become a good sweeper, it does help to have a little bit of muscle and coordination. It's a known fact that two good sweepers can take a rock 10 to 15 feet further than if the rock wasn't swept at all. Also, they sweep for accuracy for the intended shot. A good curler might draw to the button 4 out of 10 times without the aid of sweepers but it's pretty well guaranteed that with two good sweepers, he would draw to the button 10 out of 10 times. The way you hold the broom dictates what side of the rock you sweep on. If your left hand is at the top and your right hand is at the bottom, you should sweep on the right hand side of the rock going down the ice. Now, if it was reversed, 
where your right hand was at the top and your left hand was at the bottom, you should sweep on the left hand side of the rock going down the ice. Now the bottom hand is the pivot hand. Now whether you use the overhand grip or the underhand grip, that is a personal preference. You should hold the broom six inches up from the corn. The bottom hand is the pivot or the action and the top hand does the actual pumping. Extend that arm out in front of the rock, keep the elbow in close to the body, and that'll give you good action. Now you've got to coordinate, of course, the broom action with the foot action, and that's kind of like rubbing your tummy and patting your head. Now you see here two good sweepers. One is real close to the rock, and the other one has to lean over a bit more. The closer to the rock, the better you are. Sweeping is the most physical part of the game, but there are rumors of some new developments. And I would love to have the concession for extension cords. Like any other sport, curling has its full set of rules and regulations. But unlike many sports, curling has its unwritten laws. They all pertain to etiquette and the behavior of the player on the ice. You're seeing this from a shooter's point of view. The skip is holding the broom at the other end, and those fellows that are sitting on the bench are blocking the view so he cannot see the shot that he is throwing. If you're sitting down at that end, you make sure you give the opponent lots of room to see the shot. Move over to the other side. Another disturbing habit is when you're holding the broom for your team member to make a shot, the opposing team is moving around behind that house and just creating a real disturbance. That is most annoying to the fellow that is throwing the rock. Quiet! Now when you're concentrating on the shot and you want to see how the ice runs and all of a sudden the opposing team jumps out because they want to find out how the ice runs and you can't see. You're looking through a maze of legs. This is a common fault. The fella in the hack is concentrating on the shot that he's trying to play and two fellas are walking towards him. Lead and second should stay between the hog lines and stand very still. While sweeping takes muscle and power, and the delivery takes timing, balance, and concentration, probably the most demanding and interesting aspect of the game of curling takes the form of strategy. Come on, I'll show you. Now strategy can take a variety of forms. If you're five or six up in a curling game, strategy is practically non-existent. But if you're down two or three points, this is when you have to employ strategy to try and get back in the game. Now first of all, we'd like to start off by giving you a few tips, especially in the early ends. Now for you skips that are gonna be calling ice in the early part of the game, we suggest that you always call ice in the house, not out here, in front of the rings, but always in the house and preferably on this T line. Now there's a very good reason for that, and that is because you have all these circles to use as guidelines. You have the outside of the eight foot, the outside of the four foot, the inside of the four foot, and right completely across here. Now the reason for this is if you held the broom there and the rock ended up on the other side of the four foot, you know, and especially later on in the game when you have a tendency to forget how it reacts, is that it took four feet of ice and you put the broom there, and it ended up on the other side of the forefoot. And this is especially good when you're, there's a rock out in front, and you want to draw around it later on in the game. You know that in the early end, you held the broom there, and the rock ended up here. So to get around that guard, you might just give yourself a little more ice to get around that guard and draw in there. Now, that's very important. And ice calling is probably one of the most important features of the early ends. Now, for you skips, the very first rock of the game, let's suppose it, that you uh, lost the toss and your lead is throwing the first rock of the end and of the game, you always call ice from the outside in towards the forefoot. Now the reason for that is, is that you must find out how to get into the forefoot. And this is very easy. You put the br broom in the center of the eight foot and draw from the outside in. Now, if your opponent comes along and takes this rock out and rolls out himself, you can then switch to the intern and go from the outside of the house into here. Now all of a sudden, in two rocks, you find out how to get in towards the center. Now this is very important because the majority of points in a curling game is scored in the forefoot or the button area. So you might as well find out how to get into that area at the very earliest possible moment. So that's, you draw from the outside in with one side and then the other. I can't emphasize enough the importance of playing it simple and wide open in the first few ends. Many a game is lost in the first few ends by poor strategy. Now let's suppose that the opponent throws the first rock of the game and he stops maybe two or three feet short in front of the house. 
in the very first few ends, you should never attempt to draw around into the house past the guard. You should always run them off. Now, the reason for this is you want to play as simple and wide open as possible. If you attempt to draw, your lead does not know the weight or you, uh, he hasn't got an idea of the ice you're giving and he ends up short and then the opposing team ends up short and before you know it, you have a conglomeration of rocks blocking that four foot area. And then things can really go bad. The opposition could start maybe raising these ones up into the house and they could end up lying two or three and you haven't even got a shot. You, there's no way you can get in to cut down the end and the opposing team steals three on you and the majority of games are lost in the early ends by this strategy. Now the philosophy you should employ later on in the game when you know the ice conditions, know how your team is playing and you have draw weight, is that if you have last rock, you should always try and gamble for extra points when you have last rock. When the opposing team has last rock, try and hold them down to one point or make it very difficult for them to get a point. Now this philosophy should be used and employed later on in the game. Curling is now enjoyed by thousands of people throughout the world. We hope that this film will add to the enjoyment of your game.